At this time, we have a, uh, a group of people who are going to be coming and sharing memories of Lindy, and Christopher, and Cameron. Uh, these are family members and close friends. I'd like to begin by asking Katie, uh, Katie, who is uh, the second born of Ray and Don Simmons and the oldest daughter, she's going to come and start us off. Good morning, everybody. My name is Katie, and as many of you already know, I'm Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron's big sister. I have to say I'm not a public speaker. I'm shy, I have a lisp, and a really strong Cajun accent, so this is the last thing I ever thought I'd sign up for. But I had a strong urge that this was something that I had to do, and I'd do anything for these three kids. I honestly didn't know what I would say other than this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me but I knew God and my amazing cousin Ross would help me get something on paper. I could tell you the horrors of December 17th and 18th, but we all know enough about that. I don't want my mom and dad to look back at this service and think of how sad it was. I want them to sit there and be proud. I want them to be so proud of those three little kids. These three little kids have touched more lives than we ever could have imagined. I'd like to tell you a story about each of their births since I was old enough to remember them all, but honestly, my mom being pregnant and having babies became sort of the norm. It almost seemed like a holiday as a child. There was Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and baby births. We almost had a rotation set up on who slept with mom at the hospital. Lindy came into this world in a true bougie girl fashion. She needed the world to know that she had arrived. Out of all nine births, she was the only one who arrived via C-section, and it was also an emergency C-section and on mom's birthday. She was the shyest, rudest, grumpiest little girl. She would embarrass my mom by not telling anyone hello, and then one day she suddenly blossomed in every sense of the word. She became beautiful inside and out. In other words, my girl had a glow up mentally and physically. She beamed with radiance. She had a light about her that drew you in. One thing I will miss about her is her always being there to capture our special events. I never had to think twice about having pictures taken. I knew that no matter what we were doing, we were gonna have the best pictures of it. Since my little girl, Ami, and Lindy were closer in age, they were more like sisters than Lindy and I were. So I just knew I had to ask her to be my little boy's nanny, and she was the best nanny to him. She loved Ami and her nephew so much, but she really just loved all kids in general, and I know she would have made the best mother one day. I'm happy I was able to see her grow from a shy little girl to the beautiful woman she was destined to become. I will miss the random weekday visits from her mom and Cameron. I will miss her laugh, her funny facial expressions, and I will just miss her and brother. How can I devise words to properly honor the golden child? We, were joke- we weren't joking when we called him the angel child. He really was perfect. He was everything you could ever want in a son. He didn't want my mom or dad to spend a penny on him. He worked hard and wanted to be independent as early as possible. With Christopher being a teenage boy and booed up, and I would always joke with mom, I wasn't as close to him as I was with my sisters, but of course, I loved him dearly, and he held an extremely special place in my heart. When I was 16, he was only a few years old, and he was the most at the most adorable age. So I would dress him up and take him places with me as if he was my own. This is where my special affection for him began to grow. As much as he loved to travel, he was a homebody like no other. I'll never forget when he was younger, maybe seven or eight, I took him, Kyle, and a few other boys to sleep at our house in Texas to take him to a motocross show. He was so homesick that he actually threw up. I I may have not been fun for him or me to clean up, but I always thought it was funny because I never heard of anyone being physically homesick, especially when a little kid was on a fun adventure. Honestly, that one incident may have been the most stress he's ever caused my parents. Out of all the beautifully hidden grays on my mom's head, I bet not one single one came from brother. 
He was driven and determined for success more than any teenager I had ever met. He had already taken the ACT four times, every single time it was offered. He was not going to stop until he got that 32. Mom is actually waiting for his latest scores today. He had so many plans. He was a mini version of his big brother, Ren, and he wanted to be a software engineer just like him. The hardest part of all of this, all of this is that we'll never see him live out his dreams, but I take comfort in knowing that where he is now is far beyond any dream he had here on earth. But as driven as he was, he was also a lot of fun. Although he was quiet, gentle, and kind, he was also so witty. My last text from him was him responding to me telling him happy birthday. He replied, thank you, Katie Derwan. He could be as silly as he was serious. And for my sweet Cameron, my little mini me, since I organized the speakers and read over the speeches, I realized that it may seem like Cameron may fall short when compared to her siblings. That's not the case. She was only 15, and to ask her friends, only 15-year-olds, to write a big speech and speak in front of a crowd is asking a lot. Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron were all loved equally and in their own special way. I had just turned 16 when Cameron was born. Mom actually got tired of picking out baby names, <laughs> and she let me pick Cameron's spelling and her middle name. Cameron was the sweetest, most caring little girl with the kindest heart. She was so much like me in so many ways. She may not have my tough exterior or feisty attitude, but we both have the biggest hearts. She loved to travel, and I even got to take her on our last beach trip that we took with my husband's family. She happily tagged along just to get a taste of the beach. And my husband and I recently went on an anniversary trip and discovered how beautiful Northwest Arkansas is. The fall colors captivated our souls, and mom and I were planning a big trip to where we can bring the whole family. I mostly couldn't wait to take Cameron. I knew she would have loved it as much as I did. And we both love baths. I mean, we really, really love our baths. When Cameron and mom would come over to babysit Bregman, the first thing she'd do is sneak away to my big soaker tub and play with all of my bath products for hours. I'm not sure if my parents are gonna know what to do with all the extra hot water. <laughs> Cameron had a slightly rebellious streak about her much like myself, but I knew she was maturing and would follow in my footsteps and be successful one day. I knew her path may have turned out to be a little crooked, but I knew she would get there. She had already decided on majoring in health information management and working from home just like me. I think it was because she saw me on a conference call in my pajamas with a towel on my head after a lunchtime bath break. She was sold. As I went through the things in her room, I realized just how many things I had bought for her in comparison to Lindy and brother. It wasn't because I loved her more, but it was because shopping for her was like shopping for myself. Mom always said that after seven kids, she was on repeat. Christopher was a lot like Wren, and Cameron was a lot like me. Cameron was meek and kind, and I loved that about her. No matter what kind of picture I showed her of my kids, she wanted me to send it to her. She was always so mindful of others and hated for anyone to go out of their way for her. I'm going to miss so many things about her. I know it sounds cliche, but the world was truly a better place with these three in it. Lindy was a light. Christopher was the most kind, determined, and responsible 17-year-old I had ever met. Cameron had a huge, kind heart, and she was a peacemaker. The only way we'll be, we will be able to carry on in a world without them is by trusting the hand of God. We have no understanding of how this could be part of God's plan, but he is too wise to have fault in his plans. We will miss them every second of every day, and we hope and pray that we can learn to live a life without him. And I'd also like to mention this. It's sort of unrelated, but I just had a thought that lately more than ever, this world is chaotic and it's noisy. Everyone is pitted against each other, sometimes by race, sometimes by politics, or even vaccination status. And then we get to see the good of humanity in times like these. 
No one cares about my family's politics or our skin color. No one asks about our vaccination status before caring and praying for us because it's not important. People have reached out to me from different countries, different races. All of this noise is there to distract us and pit us against each other. But look how my little kids showed the world a little unity and what's truly important, which is love. And in the midst of this storm, many blessings came to my family. I cannot properly put into words how grateful we are for everyone. Family, friends, strangers, businesses all reached out to show us that they care. The compassion of thousands of people from all over the world showered my family with prayers, donations, well wishes in the way none of us could have ever predicted. If I listed each one individually, we would be here for days, but I do have to recognize a few. Many people stepped up to lend a hand in helping to save my mom and Marissa while trying, to, trying their best to save my siblings. From the witnesses and the volunteers at the scene to the first responders, the paramedics, the hospital staff and surgeons, I'd like to give a special thanks to a few that I had the pleasure of speaking with. Tyler, Jonathan, Kyle, and Lindsay. I'd also like to thank the, thank the staff at Lafayette General even though my siblings weren't treated there, they saved my mom and Marissa's life and allowed us to comfort mom and treated us with extra care and compassion. I'd also like to thank Gwen for organizing the meal train and everyone who brought food or plans to bring food. It's really been incredibly helpful to not have to worry with that. I wanna thank Monica for organizing the vigil and the blood drive and everyone who donated blood. I recently learned that Christopher did receive a substantial amount of blood and I'd like to organize an additional blood drive later on in an attempt to replace what he was given. I work in healthcare and I know how critical the blood supply is. There are so many people that I need to thank. I, I can't properly put into words what some of these people did for my family. Pastor Armin and Pastor Jacob LeBlanc walked us throughout this whole ordeal. They checked in on us and were so encouraging to us. We're thankful for you and your families. And I can't say enough about our Savior's Church and everything they've done for us. They have been so incredibly generous and have shown the love of Jesus to my family in a time of great need. Also, thank you to Pastor Jacob Aranza and Pastor Don Norman, who both ensured that all of our family's needs were met. I also don't know how to properly say thank you to Pastor Paul. He has been with us every step of the way. He spent hours at the hospital and visiting with us. He was there for us for the viewing yesterday, which in my opinion was the hardest day yet. Thank you for being there in every way and also helping to organize everything. And last but definitely not least, Monique. She stepped up for our family in a way we could have never imagined. From hours after the incident until now, she has been a rock for us. She has given us hours of her time when she's already so busy. She smoothed over little family incidents and issues that arose, and she's given us gentle guidance and direction on arrangements and so much more. We can never express how thankful we are for her and how she has helped us through this. So many people came to us during this tragedy. You have all shown us God's love when we desperately needed. I wish I had time to thank each and every one of you, but please know that my family is humbled and thanks you from the bottom of our hearts. And this wasn't in my script, but I know I'm on live, so if I can just tell anybody, yesterday I had to watch my mom in a wheelchair, get rolled to Marissa in a wheelchair and hug her in front of my three little siblings. So if you can please, if you have a drink, don't drive. Just the thought of if that man would have made a different choice that we wouldn't be here, it's almost hard to fathom. So if, if I can just give any message, please don't drink and drive. It will wreck someone's world. And that's all I have. I think uh, Cameron is up there.